How did Arthur Conan Doyle come up with the idea for Sherlock Holmes? Elementary, my dear Watson, the world's greatest detective was based on a real person. But who? The game is afoot! Hi, I'm Siobhan Thompson and this is Anglophenia. The character of Sherlock Holmes has been adapted for film and television 254 times and been played by a plethora of actors in many different ways. From Basil Rathbone's reserved intellectual to Jeremy Brett's depressive, all the way to Robert Downey Jr's eccentric drug addict. And of course there's the high-functioning sociopath played by Benedict Cumberbatch, who may be the most popular of them all, I mean, why wouldn't he be with those cheekbones? You could just put your eye out on them and you'd be happy to be mine. But no matter how different they may seem, there is one thing that they all have in common, and that is Holmes' uncanny observational skill. His ability to deduce an astonishing amount of information about a person just by looking at them. He's also a crack shot, a master of disguise, and he brought himself back from the dead. No such superhuman genius could exist in real life, right? Wrong. Meet Dr. Joseph Bell, a man who could look at a sailor's tattoos and tell you where he traveled who could tell a person's entire life history merely from her behaviour or the way that she walked. He was the real-world inspiration for Conan Doyle's masterful but complicated sleuth. Even Sherlock's appearance, a tall, thin man wearing a deerstalker hat and cape-like Inverness coat, was based on Bell. Joseph Bell was born in Edinburgh in 1837. He came from a long line of surgeons. His great-grandfather Benjamin Bell was one of the first major scientific surgeons, meaning that he used an empirical and experimental approach to surgery, you know, as opposed to like a hacksaw and luck. Joseph Bell became a surgeon and teacher at Edinburgh University right around the time when medicine was starting to become the modern practice that we recognise today. In the 1870s, Conan Doyle studied medicine under Bell. He actually worked as Dr. Bell's clerk for a while. In many ways, Conan Doyle's relationship with Dr. Bell was much like Dr. Watson's to Holmes, except, you know, with pure poisons, guns and mysterious seductresses. Conan Doyle actually really liked thinking of himself as Watson. He actually even sometimes signed autographs as Dr. John Watson, which is like super method. Bell was also a pioneer of forensic science, especially forensic pathology, and he assisted the police in investigating many major crimes, including the murders of Jack the Ripper. So you can also blame Joseph Bell for inspiring all of those ubiquitous forensic-based police procedurals. But it is important to note the differences between Dr. Bell and the fictional Sherlock Holmes. First of all, Joseph Bell was a doctor and not a detective. And while Holmes is a lonely, asexual workaholic, Bell was a family man. Also, he probably did far less cocaine. The character of Holmes was also inspired by other figures in Conan Doyle's life. Henry Littlejohn and Robert Christison were both sources of inspiration. Henry Littlejohn spent 50 years as Edinburgh's surgeon of police and was involved in criminal cases far more often than Bell was. And Robert Christison, an Edinburgh professor, experimented with dangerous drugs and regularly chewed coca leaves. So that's the real Sherlock Holmes. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more episodes, and let me know in the comments who your all-time favourite Sherlock Holmes is.